devotional reading today is from Psalm 7, and it's verses 6 through 11. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger, lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their, sa for their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. Uh, the Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteousness God trieth the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for his word. Uh, we'll have the reading of our lesson at this time. Yes, opening our hearts and receive what God has. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Our lesson today is The Avenger. Our um, focus verse is in our lesson. Our focus thought, we must trust in God's plan to redeem and restore us. Our lesson text is from Nahum 1, verse, verses 1 through 7. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry, and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languish, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world, and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. I better do this phone check here. I think I forgot to turn it down. Everybody got their phone checked? All right. All right. Well, praise the Lord again, everybody. Amen. Certainly welcome to our Sunday school session today. And uh, lesson 12, uh, the Avenger. Amen. Um, we're going to see God in two different lights today uh, in, the, in our lesson. As we have the story of from the prophet Nahum. Nahum was a prophet of, of that uh, was uh, sent to preach to uh, Israel, but as well as the city of Nineveh. And of course, every time we think about most more, more often than not, when we think about Nineveh, we think about Jonah and the whale experience, and because that seems to stand out more sensational than what we have with Nahum today. But uh, uh, nevertheless, we, we see God in, 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 as I said, two different lights. When Jonah was sent to the city of Nineveh, and by the way, the city of Nineveh, Nineveh was uh, Assyrians, um, so they were not of the stock of Israel, but they were Assyrians, and they were pretty much uh, actually enemies of Israel. But um, uh, Jonah was sent there uh, to preach uh, repentance 
to the city of Nineveh. And that's what his message from the Lord was going to be. And Nineveh was a, uh, I guess if you try to compare it with today's standards, uh, Nineveh was like New York City is today. It was in its day and in time, it was a very large, very um, prosperous city. Uh, and, but it was just engulfed in uh, unrighteousness. And, uh, of course, you might expect it to be. They were, uh, they were not considered uh, God's people, uh, chosen people at the time. So uh, today we would think of them as just Gentiles, uh, uh, cities like, like New York and other places. But anyways, God dealt so with them that he sent Jonah down and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things we could get into and discuss about why God uh, uh, would uh, deal with Nineveh as he did, but he did. And of course, we, it's been used over and over and over again uh, down through the age, uh, ages of time since that happened. Uh, God has t spoken many, many different uh, lessons and messages just from that uh, particular uh, time alone. So there's, there's, some, so there's some great benefit uh, even to us today when we study about uh, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God, and all those sorts of things. And he would uh, smile upon the Assyrians at the time as he did. And of course, we all know the story about Jonah. We won't cover all of that today. But uh, Jonah resisted at first, but God made him to know, you know, you, you, you can't go against what God tells you to do, for sure. So he winds up going to Nineveh and preached uh, the word to them, preached repentance and let them know that uh, God was going to judge them if they didn't uh, clean up their act. And, and lo and behold, they did. I mean, it was a, a citywide uh, a thing where uh, they all went on a fast, they all uh, carried out the, uh, and I think true, I believe true repentance. Right? God wouldn't have accepted anything, anything else or anything less. And so I don't think you can argue with what happened. They did repent. And God fulfilled his word and he did uh, then uh, uh, reserve him, himself from bringing forth uh, judgment upon him at that, that, that time and destroying the city of Nineveh. And so uh, it happened, just like it says. Well, today's lesson deals with Nineveh again. Of course, Jonah's off the scene. And, uh, it's been somewhere between 100 to 150 years after Jonah's day, and after the time he went down and preached to Nineveh. Uh, during which time, uh, the inhabitants of Nineveh had what we would call today backslid. Uh, they had gone back into those evil ways and ungodly mannerisms and, and, and right, you know, right in the face of God. They just turned back and became as bad, maybe even worse than what they were before. And, and that's usually the case, and even to this day. Uh, backsliders usually turn out to be some of the worst people on earth. Uh, those who have been enlightened with the truth and, and been, been saved and, and then, then forsake that and go back in, they, they, they turn out to be very terrible people for the most part. And so I got to believe that Nineveh was as evil, if not more so, than they were even from the days of Jonah. And so God then speaks again to Nineveh in the form of his prophet once again. And that's where we pick up our, our today's lesson with Nahum. Nahum was a prophet of God, uh, like Jonah was at his day. Uh, and God, of course, uh, speaks to him and let him know what he wants him to do uh, about the city of Nineveh. Well, uh, this time around, uh, 
you know, God must grant repentance if, if for anyone to repent. That's by his grace, by his mercy. Well, God did that with you know, Jonah's day. God was merciful and, and God was forgiving. But this time around, uh, they have pushed God too far. And so, uh, whereas we've seen God in the light which he is uh, uh, today. Uh, uh, we know God is good. We know God is, uh, is true. We know God is light. We know God is love. We know God is holy. And more often than not, that's the way we uh, focus on him as. And merciful and kind and all those uh, positive attributes and and God is all of that uh, he's all and every bit of that and, but at the same time as what we learn in our lesson today as said in one place that God will not always strive with man God as good as God is as great as God is uh, there is a limit there uh, now, if, if, if you're fulfilling uh, God's word, th there's definitely no limit. There's no boundary. There's you know, uh, what God will do for you and how God will bless you. But if you continue uh, to go against or, or return back as the city of Nineveh did, turn back into their sinful ways in such a degree of evil, evilness, um, God just uh, says enough is enough. Enough is enough. And so uh, Nahum isn't a, didn't go preaching repentance. His message wasn't repent. His message was judgment's coming. Judgment is coming. And uh, that's the way it's going to be. So God, uh, uh, we learn another side of God. And, uh, but God's always holy, regardless. God's always right. God's always righteousness. It's impossible for God to sin. And, but God, uh, we, we learn through scriptures in various places, uh, God sometimes is an angry God. Amen? Um, uh, sometimes God is a consuming fire, uh, and I mean that in a in a negative sense. Uh, that God, in His ways with mankind, uh, he, he can He will consume man, and, and that's nothing new. You, you read your your scriptures, particularly in the Old Testament days, throughout the Testament days, God brought uh, judgment upon. Thousands and thousands, probably millions of people throughout the, those days. So God is consuming fire. God is a God of judgment, as we see in our lesson today. God is a God of judgment. Yes, he's loving, kind, merciful. All of those, forgiving to the utmost. Amen. But uh, if you will not come about as God... He would extend his mercy to you. He'll give you his word. Uh, he'll, he'll tell you and show you what you must do to get out from under the judgment of sin and, and the bondage of sin. He, he'll do all of that. Matter of fact, as we know, he went to the cross of Calvary for the very purpose and intent that we might be able to get saved. Amen? He paid his all that we might be saved. So we can't point any fingers at God. No generation can point a finger at God. No individual can point a finger at God. And in the entire of humanity, of all the days of man on earth, no one can point a finger at God. But we have to uh, uh, see God as he is. And uh, God is a God of vengeance. And uh, as a matter of fact, he, he makes us to know that. Vengeance is mine. 
I will repay, saith the Lord. Along with that, though, he, God is God. He has every right. We don't. And God even warns us uh, as men uh, that he even warns us against taking vengeance upon our, in our own hands, that we might take vengeance for ourselves. He, he warns us about that. He says, I am the God of vengeance. I can take, I don't, God's the only one that has a right to, you see. Had we lived a perfect life from the day we were born into this world and had lived throughout our adult years and never committed a sin, we might have an argument there. But, of course, we know that's not the case. That's not even possible. Everybody, all men, women, all have sinned and come short of the grace of God, the glory of God. And so we, we don't have the, that right, amen, to pass on judgment as such, amen. But God does. He's the righteous judge. He's the one that... Uh, um, uh, of course, our creator, he's the one that made us uh, as we are. And he, he, being the creator, he has rights that we don't have. He has privileges that we don't have. Amen. Yet, we, we do have to acknowledge God is merciful and loving kind and all of those things. Uh, so, uh, so Nahum then, he goes and he uh, speaks in this wise, with our lesson text today, and he said, The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkishite, a guy gave him a vision. And this wasn't, uh, um, this wasn't something that, was, uh, that could be considered or misconstrued as he ate too much pizza the night before, that sort of thing. This was a true uh, vision from God that he gave to him. And, and uh, he uh, Nahum says, God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth, and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. That's, and that's the truth. That's the word of God. In other words, as our title implies to us, he is the avenger. There's only one righteous avenger, and that's God. Amen. And so, uh, but this makes us to understand this about God. Yes, he's a God of love, peace, and all that. But yes, he's also a God of judgment and will render judgment. And he will render uh, punishment upon mankind that has uh, decided to go that route, to ignore God, to uh, resist God. Uh, to even blaspheme him, amen, in, in all sorts of ways. And God is just. God is just as our judge, amen. And so, uh, but uh, the bright side of this is we that have chosen to accept his will and to be obedient to his word, amen, God is going to Watch over us. God's going to take care of us. Amen. And those that come against us, Jesus said it'd be better if they'd never been born. We don't have to worry about getting even. And that's what, you know, that's what we, we like to do. This is, this is what human nature would like to do. In other words, you do something to me, I'm doing something back. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to get even, you see. But well, that kind of mentality is only going to make it worse. And there's a very, very good chance it's going to get us into bigger trouble. And that which we sought out to, to do is going to come back on us, rest assured. Because but at the same time, we can also rest assured that, hey, God's going to take care of it. And nobody's going to get away with anything. Amen? People that treat you bad, treat, treat you wrong, wrong uh, you know, just, just be faithful to God. Amen. And, and I would even resist 
Uh, I've heard people talk like this. I'm going to pray God against you. I'm going to pray God's judgment on you. And, and, and people do that. I've always been a little hesitant about taking that kind of stand or that, that kind of action. I, I always just say, you're in the hands of God. That, I, you know, that's as far as I can take that. Uh, I'm not going to pray for your destruction. I'm not going to pray for evil to come upon you. I'm not going to pray that you get cancer and, 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 and stuff like that. I, I'm not going to do that. Hey, that's God's business is the way I see it. Amen. And the thing of it is, we don't have to do that. That's, that's a good thing about this. This is what we, you know, why God is so good. Because we don't have to resort to that. For one thing, we're not, we're not in, in, a, in a position, we're not in a place to do so. Because we ourselves deserve death, if you will. Because the day that you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And so we deserve, we deserve death as punishment because of our sins. It's only by the mercy and the grace of God, uh, as he had went to the cross of Calvary, amen, that he died for us, amen. He died in our place. I'm talking about spiritual death now. Because in the natural state, well, in the natural, it's appointed unto a man wants to die. So you're not going to get out of that unless, unless you're in the church and, uh, and Jesus comes for the church and you're still alive. That's the only way you're going to escape death. Other than that, whether you're saved or you're not saved, in the natural, you're going to die at some point in time. Amen. But spiritually speaking... We have been given eternal life, even if we'll trust God and hold on to his word and, and be obedient, amen, and faithful uh, to God. That, that's what God asks of us. And, and in return, you see, well, people, and I had some of the same thoughts myself when I first started to consider about get, getting saved, getting in the church. Uh, amen. Well, what have I got to give up? You know, that's, that's, a, that's a normal thought for people who are considering, contemplating whether they need to get in the church or not. Well, what have, what's it going to cost me? What have I got to get up? What, what do I have to quit doing? Blah, blah, blah. And, and, and as if, as if there would be anything, you know, more valuable in this world than eternal life. Amen. I'm think about it. I got to give up this or got to give that vice, this vice, that vice, this uh, lifestyle. But what in the world is out there, known to mankind, that would be worth more than your eternal life? Eternal life with God, bliss forever and ever. Nothing will even come near it. Amen. Uh, if you gain the whole world, Jesus said. If you gain the whole world. Now, that, of course, that's just, we know that's not going to happen. But if you could gain the whole world, but yet lose your soul, what profit have you? You see. So the entire world is still not comparable to eternal life with Jesus. And so when you think about that from time to time, and, 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 and we find ourselves from time to time in a fix, and a, in a, in a, in a, in our faith is getting tried, and we're put to the test, amen? And, and, and that's real, that's, that, that happens. That's gonna happen. And you, you, you continue to say, at those times you have to consider, amen? Well, what's my move? What's my, what's my reaction? What, what am I going to do? And you compare, of course, with what have you got to lose and what have you got to gain? Well, whatever it is that you have got to give up or quit or not do is nothing compared to the, to the fruits of uh, a reward uh, of you holding... Holding faith, 
holding on to faith, being obedient to God. Amen. And, and, and I'm not saying that's easy. Sometimes it's hard uh, if, we, if we tell the truth. Sometimes, you know, especially uh, times like you get angry. Ang anger is, can be a bad thing. Most of the time it is a bad thing. Because anger uh, causes you to go beyond sensible reasoning. Uh, you know, when you get angry and, and angry enough, uh, you know, uh, uh, it drives you to do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. To say things, I mean, how many times in your lifetime have you said something that you wish you hadn't said? You know, is that it? I, it's happened to me. I don't. Maybe it hasn't happened to you, but you wish, you wish, you could have that back. And you realize, I shouldn't have never went there. I should have never said that. Amen. It happens, it happens definitely with married folks. Uh-huh. Yeah. It happens on both sides. And, and, and you, you, you really pay for it one way or another. Uh, you, you, you know, and, and that's just in this life. It's not even worth it even in this life. To, to, to create havoc in your life because of, you know, something you said that you shouldn't have said. It's not even worth it in this life, much less when you start thinking about your salvation. Amen. You might say something or do something that's going to cost you your salvation. Amen. And, and so uh, Nahum was the prophet of God. And he reveals in his book, here, written book here, and he brings this out about God. And he said, God is jealous. The Lord revengeth. Amen. God is a God of vengeance. And he's going to take that revenge upon those who have denied uh, his word, those who have blasphemed him, those who have brought harm uh, and caused havoc with God's people. Amen. Um, God is a God of vengeance and he will take that. In this life, I believe that. In this life, God passes judgment upon people in this life as well. But in the life to come, for sure. And we are encouraged by God. Amen. That we must trust God in his righteousness and his goodness. All right. He said, the Lord is slow to anger. Prophet brings this out. Slow to anger. Some people can get mad in a second. Amen. There's people are mad. I mean, we're probably all guilty of it too, to some extent. Something can happen. And just in a moment, or just a blink of an eye, you have said or done something that you immediately realize, oh my goodness, what did I do? God is slow to anger. You, 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 you have to keep pushing and keep pushing, keep pushing. I've known people like that. Uh, uh, they have that kind of nature. That they're, they're kind of quiet. They don't say a lot. They don't, you know, they're, they're not boisterous or anything like that. Uh, but then you, you get somebody that keeps pushing them, keeps pushing them. Uh, and as I said, everybody's got their break point. You've heard that. Everybody's got their point that, you know, and, and I, got, I got to believe that. I, I really, knowing human nature as I do and experiencing human nature and life for 72 years now, uh, I, I know there's a breaking point in everybody. Amen. But that's why it's, it's, it's so advisable to get hooked up with Jesus. Amen? Because where you come up short, he can supply what you need. Amen. I mean, how many times has the Holy Ghost kept you from saying something or doing something? Amen? Because the Holy Ghost is given to us, and that's an advantage that we have that we didn't have before we got saved. 
Amen. Whereas the Holy Ghost will rise up in you. Amen. Cause you to uh, see the error of your ways before you get into it. Now, I don't, I'm not asking for confessions, but uh, on the other hand, have you ever experienced uh, where you didn't take heed to the unction of the Holy Ghost? Where you ignored, perhaps, the warning sign? Amen. Well, I think you probably found out fairly quickly that was the wrong thing to do. And sometimes it's a costly thing because if you go against God, it's not a good thing. Amen. It's not a good thing. Uh, God is loving, but God will chastise those whom he loves. And if you get into error, God will, he loves you enough that he will do what needs to be done to correct the direction you're in because he knows that direction is the direction of destruction of death at the worst and so God loves us so that he will indeed work with us God is slow to anger he's great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked you see uh, as merciful as he is. Uh, and you say, well, how can he do that if he's, if he's all this? How? Because he knows. This is what we don't know. But he knows those wicked hearts. And he knows if those wicked hearts would ever repent or not. He knows uh, whether they're indeed... Uh, they're going to continue to be like that until they die in this world. So he's just. He's got judgment set for the wicked. You see, uh, prophet lets us know that uh, hell, what we know of as hell, which is that eternal judgment place that lost souls is going to be cast into forever, uh, he, he, he knows, of course, those who will and those who won't. And, and so we, we're going to be all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And so the Bible encourages us to do it now. It's a lot better if you get your sins judged now than wait and let your sins follow you into judgment day. Because if you wait till you wait, your sins follow you to judgment day, what is the judgment for sin? Death. But by God's message is, the message of salvation is, get your sins judged now. And take upon you the love and the mercy of God that he would become judgment for you, which he did on the cross of Calvary. But by your repentance... And obedience to the word of God, being born again of water and spirit, you're covered in the blood of Christ. That blood that was shed on Calvary is, is going to be sufficient to uh, bring you salvation. That way you will not have to face eternal damnation. But you'll have eternal life with Jesus. Amen forever. All right, again, the prophet speaks about uh, this, side of, this side of the Lord. He said, the Lord, um, he will not all quit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry. He drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth it, and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth, or they become uh, weak, so weak they're 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 not of they they have no hope. They lose hope, Amen. And without God in your life, you have no hope, Amen. You're not strong. You're not, but you're weak, and you cannot live 
uh, a saved life. But with the power of God in your life, none of us could live a saved life without God in our lives. It's just not, it just couldn't happen. It can't happen. We need Jesus. Amen? Amen. We need him every day, every hour, every minute, every second. We need Jesus. All right? He said, the mountains quake at him, the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Amen. This is our God. The majesty of the Most High. Amen. And even the mountains melt at his presence. Amen. Even the waves of the sea obey his command. Amen. Even the Red Sea has to part just because he says so. Amen. This is our God. This is our Savior. Amen. He, don't you want him on your side? Uh, part of the work of an avenger is, is that they will, some, it is someone who will and can and will intercede on your behalf can, uh, they can uh, bring justice to you and in your life and, uh, that no one else can do. And this is what uh, it comes down to. Jesus is our avenger. Jesus is our advocate. Jesus, if in the modern time, maybe I'd say it like this, Jesus is our lawyer. Jesus is our juror, Jesus is our judge. We have it stacked. Amen. How are you gonna how are you gonna lose in your day in court if your lawyer is Jesus and your uh, and the juror is Jesus and the judge is Jesus? Amen. And he's promised you, Amen, mercy. And grace, amen. How are you going? How are you going to beat that? You can't beat that, amen. And so, what? What he had to pay a price for you for for him to be able to do that for you, amen. A great price. And so, we we, we praise God. We thank God. Um, the Book of Hebrews. I think I'll turn to that. I think it was, yeah. Well, I thought that's where I was. Well, maybe it was. The 12th chapter of Romans. I wanted to read that, yeah. Romans 12. And I'll just take one verse here. Dearly beloved, that's Romans 12 and 19. Uh, Paul, the writer here. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. As we spoke about that, uh, you can't be your own uh, avenger. Uh, this is reserved. But rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And another place it says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen? Now this is a message that we preach to the unsaved and saved alike. And to the saved, it should bring uh, to, your, uh, to your joy that you have this privilege and honor. That you have Jesus as the one who stands in the gap for you. You have Jesus as the one who is the mediator. You see, you're a mediator. You have Jesus as the one who is going to fight uh, and, and, 
and make your case for you. And he said, vengeance is mine. So if there's things there that need uh, vengeance upon, let God handle that. That's, that's a, that is the, uh, the blessing that we have of God. We do not have to try to be vengeful. We just turn it over to the hands of God and place that in his hands. Amen. We're blessed today. And as we come to a, a, a close of this lesson today, the avenger, the avenger, one word, Jesus. Jesus is our avenger. He's the one that has the right. He's the one that has the power. He's the one that has the strength. Amen. He is our, and I'm so glad. Amen. I'm so glad. Down through the years, I've needed him in, in this capacity, and he's always come through. Amen. Thanks be to God for the avenger today. 